started. Thank you. Uh, good evening, members. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this uh, meeting of Plans East. I must read first the uh, following announcement. I would like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be broadcast live to the internet or filmed and will be capable of repeated viewing or another use by such third parties. Please could I also remind members of the public who have registered to speak that they will be admitted to the meeting at the appropriate time. Please be aware that if technical difficulties interrupt the meeting that cannot be overcome, I may need to adjourn the meeting. I would like to, for the purpose of the webcast, introduce myself and officers. My name is Councillor Paul Kesker and I'm the chairman of the committee for tonight. My vice chairman is Councillor Heather Brady. Our planning officers are Jerry Godden and Andrew Marks and our um, democratic services officers are Jackie Letha and Laura Kerman. We will now take item two and take it that advice has been given to public and speakers attending. We'll take item three, the minutes of our last meeting, pages nine to 16. Are members happy that they are signed as a true record of our last meeting? Agreed. 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 Thank you. Item four, apologies for absence, Jackie. Uh, yes, Chairman, we have apologies from Councillor McEwen, Councillor Rolfe and Councillor Jones. All right, thank you. Item five, declarations of interest. Members, do we have any declarations of interest tonight? Nope, I can see none. Okay, thank you. We will go on to item six. Any other business? No other business, Chairman. Thank you. Item seven is the Epping Forest District Local Plan Submission Version Planning Policy Briefing Note. And it's just noted that we are acting in accordance with it. Item eight is site visits. I will ask if anyone is calling for a site visit, but all members should be aware that if you do, a site visit will not take place and the particular item will be referred to DDMC committee. And if you ask for a site visit there, it will not take place and the matter will be referred to full council. We will then go on to item nine, which is 0614 Little Honington Matching Green, pages 17 to 24. Jerry, if you please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just get this on the screen. Uh, I can trust uh, members can see the display. Uh, I can. I hope other members can. I think you need to bring your microphone down, Jerry. Yes, yeah, so I haven't actually started talking, I, I shall do now. Um, yes, this is uh, an application, uh, somewhat strangely, it's for the property known as Little Honington, but the um, application is to put a pole and mirror on the village green at Matching Green, which is not within the ownership of the applicant, uh, it's within the ownership of the parish council. Uh, so you can see... Um, to the uh, Little Honningtons is this building here, and it, the uh, pole and mirror will be placed within the red circle area. Uh, this is just a general drawing of the plan showing the dimensions uh, of the pole and the mirror. Uh, and currently a photograph of the pole in which the mirror is proposed. Um, we have received uh, today an email, uh, a photograph showing the mirror install installed on the pole. Uh, we're not actually too sure of the providence of that, whether the mirror is actually on the pole or not at this stage. Uh, the information uh, before me in the officer's pack that it isn't installed, but we have had a, uh, a photograph in from a member of the public saying it is installed. Um, regardless, um, this is the application. Um, this is the, the 
Um, photographs here show the entrance to Little Honington, which have had some refurbishment work recently um, and indicating uh, why the applicant wants the mirror on the green where it is for road traffic safety issues, um, because this is uh, on a blind bend uh, and the mirror will enable the applicant to exit and egress the property safely without harm to the highway. Um, uh, this just shows what it's currently like, uh, and this was a previous uh, photograph of the site um, before it was sold, um, various refurbishments were carried out. So, um, we have received um, a number of objections to the scheme as laid out in the um, report, in the officer's report. Uh, and we also have had uh, no objection raised by the parish council as they own the land. They in fact <coughs> support the application on the grounds of safety uh, for the residents and road users. And to Lee Hall, Dunmo Road have raised no objection. Uh, you can see there is a considerable number of people around the green who have objected to this, this um, to the scheme. As it would uh, stand out from a distance due to its size and height, the red and white border, border has an appearance more suited to an industrial estate and not a beautiful rural green, which is a conservation area, uh, causes a highway distraction to drivers, especially when sunny, will set a precedent. This is not common land. Uh, the application form is incorrect. So that's a summary of the objections to this. Um, in looking at this, as I said, it's rather unusual because the application is from someone who doesn't own the land, um, but the land is owned by the parish council uh, and uh, they have, as you can see from the report, uh, mm -hmm. said that they support this application. So there's uh, a number of issues here. Basically, it comes down to the impact on the green belt, the impact on the conservation area and the impact on highway safety. Um, this is inappropriate development within the green belt, and therefore there must be very special circumstances to justify a grant of approval. Um, additionally, within the conservation area, mm -hmm. our conservation team uh, are not particularly in favour of it, as you can see from the report itself. Um, and that is something we need to take into account when deciding what, what uh, decision is made. Um, and also, we have had comments from the Highway Authority, and as you can see from the officer's report, they generally do not support uh, the use of mirrors, um, but they're saying, as it's sited within private land, and there's not <coughs> something which the Highway Authority can object, object to. It, it should be noted that if permission is granted and the mirror erected, if it does cause a reported highway safety issue to other motorists, then the county may use its powers under the Highways Act to remove the mirror, but they have raised no objection. So this is a balancing act um, on, on the part of the planning application. Um, it is an appropriate development with the green belt. So are there very special circumstances that override that? The officers having looked at this field, there is very special circumstances that override the inappropriate development aspect within the green belt. <coughs> that is it's uh, relatively minor size uh, and impact, especially when viewed against the background of the trees in the area. Um, we're also looking to condition the, the uh, application if members are minded to grant this uh, so that it will be painted in the appropriate colour. Uh, and while mention has been made of the red and white stripes around the mirror, this can also be dealt with by way of by the way of condition number two to have a green or neutral colour more in keeping uh, with the green itself. Um, it's also clear that looking at um, the reasons for this, there is a highway safety uh, issue. Um, it's clear that th there are walls uh, that are surrounding the property on the entrance, and these walls have been there, as you can see from the previous photographs, for some considerable time, and the refurbishment carried out uh, by the new owners of the property. Um, it is considered understandable that they would want to be able to enter and exit their property in as safe a manner as possible, especially on, on the road in this area. Um, it's also considered by the officers that notwithstanding the comments from the conservation area team, uh, that this isn't going to cause significant harm that would justify a refusal to the uh, character and appearance of the conservation area, uh, especially if the conditions uh, and condition number two is implemented, is, sorry, is imposed. And we can also, and we can make that um, be implemented as well because it, it is a, um, a good condition. So that would reduce the harm down uh, significantly. So taking everything into consideration and the balancing process of the planning application, it is considered that there are very special circumstances uh, to justify this application um, and it doesn't cause a significant harm to the Greenbelt 
um, oh, sorry, to the uh, conservation area that would justify a refusal. Uh, so in this indication, the recommendation is to approve subject of the conditions. Okay, thank you very much. We have two speakers tonight. Uh, our first uh, is Mrs. Pitson, who is an objector, and the Democratic Services Officer is going to read her comments. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Bonnie Pitts and I live at Greenside Matching Green, next door but one to Mr. and Mrs. Elliot. The house in between belongs to Mrs. Amy Holland. Mrs. Holland is currently away and she has emailed me to request that I represent her views. When I moved to Matching Green, Little Honington, in which Mr. and Mrs. Elliot, the applicants, now live, belonged at that time to Mrs. Holland. I am 75 and Mrs. Holland is 88. She has lived in Matching Green for over 30 years and never had a problem entering or exiting that property for the entire time, nor has she had any such problem from her present dwelling, although I have only lived in Matching Green for seven years, neither have I. The mirror, when originally and illegally erected, caused headlight and sunlight pollution directly towards both my and Mrs. Holland's houses particularly hers, and this really is potentially dangerous. Yes, cars do go fast alongside the green, but one simply has to be vigilant, careful, and use common sense to remain safe. One of Mr. Elliot's children is alleged to have had an accident exiting Little Honington. However, no objective evidence of this has ever been presented, and in any event, the erection of a mirror as proposed would benefit only those entering and leaving that the green is protected by law against exactly that kind of development, and I'm aware that Mrs. Carol Fowler, another matching green resident, has cited all members of your committee the two relevant statutes which enshrine this position and also relevant case law. It seems bizarre that the committee would consider granting this permission, since by doing so it could expose the council to a legal challenge under current law. Please do not allow this environmentally damaging pole mirror to be erected on our beautiful green. These do not become the legitimising instrument for vandalism of one of the finest and largest greens in Essex. If you do then, without doubt, many other episodes of depredation will follow and our heritage will be diminished. Yours, Benita L. Pitson. Thank you very much. Our second speaker is Mr. Tony Elliott, who is the applicant. And you, sir, have three minutes. Can you unmute, please? Can you hear me all? Thank you. Good evening, all. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to address the committee. I hope you will support the recommendation of your officers and take on board the support of the Parish Council. I would just like to say a few words about the reason why I installed the mirror and pole in the first place. After my daughter had a car accident leaving our property, I needed to step, stop it happening again, and so I arranged for this mirror to be put in. There have been other minor traffic incidents here over the years, but now I have a young grandchild and I want to reduce the risk of further accidents as much as possible. I should stress that there is no personal gain for me arising from this other than preserving safety. I removed the mirror after I was told that planning permission was needed and there have actually been some near misses since. I would just like to clarify that the fence and gates referred to as permitted development in the com uh, committee report have had no effect at all on visibility. They are sapped much further back into the site. The problem is that my property is an, on an inside bend of the road and it is front walls, enclosures, an oil tank, and vegetation in other gardens which restrict the visibility to my driveway. I value the landscape and conservation area status at Matching Green and I don't want to do anything that would harm its character and appearance. Where the, this pole and mirror have been placed, they benefit from being screened by an existing tree. I've already investigated alternative green finishes that I can submit to the council for approval to help it blend further into the landscape. And I'm willing to closely work with the conservation officers in this. 
I understand the concerns raised by some residents in the area, but granting this would not set a precedent as other driveways around the green have much clearer visibility and so don't need this added safety feature. I hope the committee will appreciate that this meal will significantly reduce the highway risks, not just for my family, but for other people driving along the road. We can't easily see cars exiting my drive until the last minute. The height of the mirror has been designed to avoid glare to any approaching drivers. Um, I'd just like to say that in this, in this present time, the traffic is getting a lot more heavier, more cyclists, and the introduction of electric cars where you can't hear the sound of anything approaching you would make, is making it more difficult. Thank you for listening, and I'm happy to answer any questions if needed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elliott. Uh, members, the recommended decision is to grant permission with conditions. Councillors, Councillor Morgan. <coughs> Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, this all started out, as uh, Mr. Elliott said, by um, his daughter having an uh, accident there. There have been, over the past years, several near misses. And um, as he said, the traffic is getting a lot heavier now. Uh, the route itself is used by many motorists and also cyclists. We're getting more cyclists through the village and it's also the route of a, a cycle race once or twice a year. Uh, there could be a, a nasty accident or there will be a nasty accident unless we ha allow this mirror to take place. You see that um, the uh, Parish Council uh, obviously support this on safety grounds. This is most important um, a reason for uh, allowing this mirror. Uh, the mirror has not been up since it was um, been asked to take down by the council. Um, the uh, applicant is quite willing to do whatever painting is necessary for the um, to in condition with the uh, condition two on the agenda. Uh, we hope that um, the committee will support this application. Um, uh, but it, as I say, it is safety more important than anything. Uh, there are other structures around the green which, um, similar to this, uh, not mirrors, but other posts and um, various things on the green. But as the parish council own the green, they have the right to say yes or no. And they um, definitely support this uh, application. And I hope the committee will go ahead with the officer's recommendation and the highway's recommendation to support it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. Do I have any other councillors? Uh, Councillor Bedford and then Councillor Whitehouse. Thank you, Chairman. I did have my hand raised as well, which uh, might help. Um, I drove around Matching Green earlier on this evening. I have to agree that I do believe very special circumstances exist with regards to the placing of the mirror. Uh, I drove past the property. I don't remember seeing the mirror, though, for some reason. I thought I might have done. I do remember seeing the photograph that was sent through this week. I would say that there are other signage. There's been comments about signage on common. Actually, around the pond, there's two ugly signs that actually say private pond. Uh, and, and they look absolutely hor horrendous compared to this, which is going to be sort of masked by the trees behind it. Hopefully, we go for condition, which I would propose that we do make sure that it is in keeping with condition two. Uh, so that it blends in, remove the red and white checkering around the outside, paint it green around the top. As long as the council approve the colours, I don't have an issue with this particular sign at all. I think it's uh, it's highly needed. Having driven around the green on quite frequently and used that particular route, I can concur that it is a very popular cyclist route, and sooner or later, a cyclist is going to get knocked off. And with the advent of the electric cars, as Mr Morgan has already said, it's just going to add chaos as we go further and further into the future. Uh, the laws protecting the green and the surrounding area were brought out many years ago when it was probably horse and cart traffic. That's all it had to deal with. And in view of that, I fully support the uh, signage plan. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Janet Whitehouse. Thank you, Chairman. Could the officer show the photographs of the um, driveway before and after the uh, uh, recent refurbishment please okay jerry can we get both of those photographs up perhaps one after the other is that that's after is it 
that's the most recent, I think. There is a, an, an earlier photograph taken from directly opposite. Can we get that one up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, councillors, I was trying to unmute uh, too many. So th this is as it is currently, um, and it doesn't want to seem to want to scroll. Just a minute. Oh dear. What's going on? Right. Okay. So yeah. So um, this is the current entrance. Uh, so the these three. Right. I'll just wait for it to catch up. So the next three. This and the next two photographs are the current entrance. And this ent and this current uh, this older photograph shows the previous entrance. So there's actually no change to the entrance as such. Um, there's clearly gates set back, but those gates um, are far enough back to allow easily the average size car to uh, be in the driveway. So um, the various small scale works and the, the gates that's have, have, uh, that have been implemented by the new owners have got no impact on the visibility that wasn't already present. Thank you and very is much. Is the height of those walls the same? Is it before and after? Uh, sorry, councillor, I missed that. Are, are the height of the walls before and after the same, or have they been raised? No, they're the same. You you can actually see, uh, if you see here, uh, these um, I think these uh, wooden poles have been removed, but you can see there's a a scallop shape on top of the uh, the wall originally, and that scallop shape is still here. So the, the white, the white pole, uh, the white gate posts. I assume they were originally gate posts had been removed, but the walls the same. Can you hold that photograph that you've just, just that one with no, that, that one there? Yes. Um, yes. Are the, is the person who who put in the objection the lady person lives next door where their car is, or is it the other side of the house? Uh, I'd have to go to the actual plan. Um, I can't uh, just. And um, Jerry, she lives yeah. two doors away. The was lady that, a, that put the, inject, the objection in? Is that green side? Um, no. Or was it? Uh, I'll tell you what. She, where she's got her address on. Yeah, green side. Green side. So yes, this would be the objectors if she's two away, and I, I think she was also talking for the one immediately next door. So it'd be these two properties here. So okay. those those on the photograph uh, would be this thatch roof cottage and then this um cream rendered gable end house okay well when chairman when i read the report um I, I really wondered how the officer came to his conclusion because when you read through the report we're told it's inappropriate development in the green belt the conservation officer is against it highways don't support the use of mirrors and the only reason they can't object is because it's on private land um then we're told that it's very special conditions, which, um, you know, the reason why that this very balanced report is being, uh, application is being uh, recommended for approval. The people who live next door who have objected, it, I can't see from this photograph that it's more difficult to get out of this applicant's house than it is from the ones down the road, which say that they have no problems. The lady who lives next door used to live in the house of the applicant, and she says she's exited it for many years. If there's a problem with speeding, that affects everybody, and it should be highway signage, which is used to uh, make everyone go, make cars go slower. I, I find it very difficult to to agree to the the mirror because uh, the applicants also say, I mean, the people next door also say that the reflection from the mirrors is affecting them. Um, so I I think on balance, and it is a very balanced report, I would not be able to support this this uh, application. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Whitehouse. I, can you pop me back on a full screen so as I can see all the councillors again? Thank you. Does any other councillor wish to speak? Uh, yeah, Councillor Brady and then Councillor Philip. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> yes, this isn't as straightforward um, an application as it would seem because um, <clears throat> I'm erring on the Councillor Whitehouse's arguments there. I think we seem to have a situation where I have received, as I'm sure the other councillors have, lots and lots of letters against the mirror from lots and lots of um, people within the parish. It's, they seem very upset that a mirror would be placed on their green. Um, 
and one of the arguments that one of them used was that they were surprised that the parish council were accepting of the mirror, but they said that um, most of the parish councillors, if not all of them, do not live on the ma on matching green. And so, in fact, it seems to be the people who live on the green and around the green and look at this green all the time who want to preserve the green belt and preserve the um, conservation area of the green, and it will affect them more. And it seems to be that the parish council have voted in favor of keeping the mirror without actually listening to the wishes and doing what the wishes of most of the parish councillors who actually live near this object. Um, so I think you really need to take that into account. It's a strange thing, but, but over the years, I've been a parish councillor now for 30 years, and I've come across this in my own parish where people say, well, I can't see it or something, therefore it doesn't matter. And I just feel we need, I know we've got the parish council saying it's all right, but, but like Mrs. Whitehouse said, we've got the conservation officers saying they don't agree with it. We've got highways saying they don't agree with mirrors. So um, I'm, I don't think I'll be voting in favour of this. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Philip. Mm. Uh, thank you, Jim. I'll keep it brief because quite a lot of what I was going to say has been said already. Um, I, I think I can understand the officer calling it a balanced decision. Um, I don't think, in my view, it actually is. I think from a purely planning point of view, setting aside parish council or, or resident uh, views on it, the, there is not a case made here that overcomes the harm to the conservation area and the green belt, even if these are it's painted green and not wrapped in red tape. I, I think the, the paradise at the bottom of page 22, um, calling out the open character of the green and the impact on the character of the and appearance of the conservation area, tying into the um, local plan existing and under uh, the submission submission version of the local plan uh, make it quite clear to me uh, that this is something that I do not, I cannot vote for and I will not be supporting this recommendation. Okay. Uh, Councillor Morgan, you wish to come back? Yes, Jen. Oh, obviously, um, the members who have objected to it haven't been to see the site. They don't know what it looks like and, uh, and the dangers that it, there is there. The Most of the parish councillors uh, live within very close to the green and they all drive around there and they've all been uh, they know what their position is so obviously um the um objection about the parish council don't know what they're doing they certainly do and we're uh the only reason is for safety and that safety is most important uh if there is a serious accident there and uh, members have refused this i i understand this will be down to the district council um because of their uh, inadequate um, support for this uh, application. I would I'd like to see what Mr. Gordon said about the um, uh, um, members have, uh, have said that um, there, there will be a challenge to this decision. I, I don't know what that, what that actually meant. Would Mr. Gordon uh, comment on that, please? Uh, sorry, Councillor, when you're saying there will be a challenge, was that from when the um, the objector was saying that there's various legislation about um, uh, village greens, etc.? Yes, yes. Uh, um, that's not a planning matter. It, it, we it. can quite happily grant planning permission for something uh, uh, like this, and it wouldn't be able to be implemented because of other legislation. But the other legislation does not have a reflection on whether we grant planning permission or not. Okay, okay. Councillor Morgan. And also, Chairman, you cannot go against our professional officers who know what they're doing. I know the conservation officer wasn't very happy about it, but she referred it to the uh, highways. Um, and they said they, they would support it, um, although they weren't very happy, but they can't do much about it. If anything happens that um, there is problems with the mirror, they can take action against the uh, uh, applicant, but not at the moment. So it's mainly safety that we must look at. And I hope the committee will look at this in that manner. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I, uh, must, 
I must come back if I might because of what Kenzo Please Morgan. do. Uh, I, I, I resent the fact that Kenzo Morgan said that people who are speaking against it and not have been there to see it. That is not true in my case. I also was very clear not to speak on board one side or the other in terms of what the parish council takes a view of it. I think it's very clear that we have professional officers, and I would put our conservation officer firmly in that patch, who said it was not an appropriate thing. Um, it is quite reasonable to disagreements between planning officers. And that, is, that is one of the beauties of the planning system. I would also say that Essex Highways were not in favour of it. He said because it was in private land, they couldn't object to it, which is a different thing entirely. Um, and I object. I always do when uh, public speakers refer to us and threaten action if things aren't granted. I significantly uh, refute Council Morgan's suggestion. That they uh. He's frozen. Uh, can, Councillor Phillips seems to have frozen, I'm afraid. We're not sure what he's refuting. Uh, can we go to Councillor Hadley and perhaps come back to Councillor Philip if we get him back? Councillor Hadley? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I was in a story when I was going to pass. And it's on a blind day. I'll be seeing traffic either way. It would be difficult to see. Um, when it comes to safety, in my book, safety trumps everything else. So I will be supporting the recommendation here. I don't think we can ignore this sort of thing. But if anything happened in the next few months or years, that will come back on us without doubt. Thank you. OK, thank you, Councillor Hadley. It is um, an Jimmy, unusual... I, I, I am back. Councillor Philip, you're back. You're with us. Go on. Would you like... You were refuting something, but you... I, I, I was refuting that there would be, if there was if an accident takes place, that there is any uh, implication of fault on the district council's part. That is not the case. Road traffic collisions are an incident between two drivers. It's not up to the district council to prevent individual accidents. We are also not the highways authority. The highways accident has nothing to do with the district council. Okay, thank you very much. It's an unusual application when uh, the the application is for land, which is in fact uh, owned by the parish council, who could have this removed if they wanted to. Uh, and also, we have been informed that the highways authority, uh, if they regard this as a danger, uh, can under legislation remove it as well. Well, if we have no other members, we will go to the vote. The recommended decision is to grant permission <clears throat> with conditions. There are two conditions. The second one of which I have confirmed with officers means that they can uh, condition that the sign, uh, that the mirror, sorry, has no uh, red and white border and that the upright can be painted a suitable color as well to enable it to blend in as well as, as possible. So uh, we will get officers to call the roll. Uh, it, it is, it is to grant permission. So if you say grant permission, uh, if not, it's to refuse or to abstain. So could we call the roll, please? Yes, Councillor. Um, Councillor Bedford. Grant permission. Councillor Bolton. I'm for refusal. Councillor Burrows. Grant permission. Councillor Hadley. Grant permission. Councillor McCready. Grant permission. Councillor Morgan. Grant permission. Councillor Phillip. Refuse. Councillor Stalker. Refuse. Councillor Vaz. Grant permission. Councillor Chris Whitbread. Grant permission. Councillor Holly Whitbread. Grant permission. Councillor John Whitehouse. Grant. Councillor Janet Whitehouse. Refuse. Councillor Keska. Grant permission. And no. Councillor Brady. Refuse. Right, so that's one, two. 
That's 10 for, five against, and no abstentions. Thank you very much. In which case, planning permission is granted with the conditions as laid down on page 18. We will now move on to the next item, which is item 10. 1035 Which Ways Ticey Hill Stapleford Abbots? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is an application in the built up area of Stapleford Abbots. You can see uh, a property that sits somewhat forward of the general building line in that particular area. Um, the application is for a, a rear extension uh, with a decking and, um, uh, and a set of steps coming down as well. Um, the this is the rear uh, proposed rear elevation. Um, that, that's the front elevation, which is not subject to the actual application. Um, this is the plan. It shows the existing garage will be retained. And this area here is a rear extension, uh, which sits then over a, a small, uh, a shallow basement, which we will see later. Uh, there's a decking area and the steps. Uh, there is also a swimming pool in this location up here, and that is not part of this application, uh, and that will become relevant as I go through this uh, uh, slides. The side elevation uh, shows the property. The ground slopes away into the rear garden, um, and this is the side extension in this area here with the basement there. Originally, there was uh, um, a, a PDE application in for a single story rear extension. Um, this was granted, uh, however, officers visited the site and found that there was actually a basement underneath the single story extension, so it wasn't a single story extension. Um, it's quite unusual, frankly, I don't think we've, we've seen much uh, like this within the district, um, but because of the sloping ground, the single story extension being built on top of uh, the basement wasn't actually permitted development, so it required a planning permission, which was subsequently um, submitted to the council. Um, the photographs uh, show it as built, so you can see um, the, the area roughly where my cursor is with the lighter coloured bricks is where the basement is and with the darker coloured bricks and the bifold windows open is the extension uh, with the decking in this area and steps going down to a concrete patio. This concrete patio is where my cursor is at the moment and then leads onto the garden. As you can see from this photograph, all of the properties in this particular area have very deep back gardens, um, which go on. So going back to this photograph, this is the pool uh, um, hollow or excavation, uh, and this is not part of the application. Uh, taking photographs from the property uh, show the neighbours at Coyton. Uh, so this is Coyton in, the, in this area here. Um, so you can see what they would be seeing as they come out of the, uh, the rear elevation and onto the decking area, uh, into the gardens, uh, and also looking back at Coyton in this area here. Uh, and this is, so this property, so this uh, extension is behind the rear building line of the neighbour at Coyton. With regard to the neighbour at St Francis, this is St Francis here uh, in this property. And again, the uh, extension is behind the rear building line of St Francis here. Uh, so you can see the views that they would have from the decking area itself. Uh, this is the basement. As I said, it's, it's quite a shallow um, structure, um, but it's uh, perfectly um, habitable for what the applicant wishes to use it for. Oh, that's too far. Um, so if I go back to this photograph, uh, no, actually, this photograph, um, it should be noted that uh, after this application was made, uh, uh, there, the, there has been erected a pool building in this area over the pool. That is not part of this application and that is subject to separate enforcement action, which is being dealt with. Um, it's not part of this actual application. And it's also the case that there are new works to the front of the property with uh, walls and gates. They are also not part of this application and subject to separate planning and enforcement investigations and action. So the application before you tonight is purely this single store, sorry, is purely the rear extension and the decking and the steps. The patio itself doesn't need permission because it's permitted development. Um, so we're basically dealing with this area here and the steps down. Uh, just one moment. 
my cursor back on the right screen. Okay, so we have received um, objections to the scheme. Uh, we've received objections from Quayton, uh, poor design, bulky addition, out of character, overbearing, loss of outlook and overlooking, and staple for Darrett's Parish Council. Uh, we object on the grounds of dubious permission for the drop curbs, which are not a massive, well, hazards for the electric gates, uh, neither of those uh, are relevant to this and overdevelopment concerning the rear extension uh, and the front wall again that's not an issue and objected to the basement plans and the fact they're now on the there appears to be no legal pull off the road sorry that's the, the parish council have put a lot into this which isn't relevant they're basically objecting on this application to overdevelopment of the rear extension and the basement um, and then they've commented further um, as you can see in their report, uh, quite a long uh, consideration. Um, the officers have looked at this and the question here is we have to take into account the impact of the extension as built at the back. Clearly, this is a retrospective application. We would have preferred it to be um, made uh, to have not been built uh, and considered it. The applicant um, did build this because he was under the impression that it was covered by permitted development, whereas our investigation found that it was not because of the addition of the basement and the height of the, uh, the building at that stage. So it does need planning permission. And our officers have looked at this in terms of the impact of the build of the extension on the two neighbouring properties. Um, there's no adverse impact on the street scene at the front of the building because this is uh, confined to the rear of the building. It's also, as you can see from both uh, this photograph that we're looking at now, and oh, I'll move the cursor, and this photograph, it's behind the existing building lines to both neighbours. This means that there is no overlooking of the neighbours' rear elevations, so you can look into their rooms. Uh, all houses in this type of area are going to have some form of overlooking into the neighbours' gardens, and this is an accepted feature of um, built-up areas. Uh, where, where development has taken place. So it is considered that there's no adverse impact in terms of loss of light, loss of sunlight to either neighbour from this building. And there is no adverse impact in terms of overlooking because the overlooking, while you can see into people's gardens, they equally can see into these people's gardens. There's no overlooking into the rear elevations. So you can't see into people's rooms where there's an expectation of privacy, um, but it does overlook each other's gardens. And in fact, all three gardens do overlook each other uh, and, and can be seen from the other. So there is far less expectation of privacy in the rear garden. Um, so the officers having looked at this uh, have recommended it for approval as it doesn't cause uh, significant harm in terms of the impact on the neighboring properties. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have two speakers. Our first speaker is Mr. Mr. Andrew Tomsit, who is an objector, and you, sir, have three minutes. Good evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. I read with interest and surprise the opinions of the planning officer on this case, and would like to draw the attention of the committee to the following. The first condition of the officer report reads, the development hereby permitted will be completed and retained strictly in accordance with the above draw, the approved drawing numbers and the listed 55p56 rev 4, 55p58 rev 3. This cannot be met because both the plan and elevation drawings are incorrect, with neither showing the recently constructed full room. I understand EFDC's own validation list for new app planning application refers to the national requirement to submit accurate existing and proposed floor plans but also clearly indicating existing buildings or walls to be demolished. I'd like to look at some of the facts pertaining to this application rather than opinion. It is fundamentally the same application as EPF 0098-20, which refused permission for the same development in May of this year. Please note, since that time, nothing has changed with the construction, and with that, I mean no corrective or remedial actions to overcome the serious issues raised by the planning committees have been undertaken. Below are extracts and salient points. 
from the committee's delegated report of that meeting. The pool building in particular is at close proximity to the shared boundary with Colliton, and this excessive depth and varying height will block view and result with a sense of enclosure to this property. The proposed development will detract from the visual amenity and will have an overbearing impact on the occupiers of Colliton. It's also noted that the occupiers of Colliton mentioned that the subject dwelling has had a previous three meter rear extension from the 1970s. And in that meeting, it says the development currently under construction, now, which is now constructed, does not comply with the requirements of GDP, GPDO. The proposed, in summary of that meeting, the proposed development by reason of its excessive depth, size and siting will have a negative impact on the character and appearance of the area and the visual amenity of the neighbouring property Colliton on the south aspect of the subject of the subject dwelling. And as such fails to comply with the policies DBE 9 and DBE 10 of Epping Forest District Local Plan 1998 and Alterations 2006 and policy DM9 of Epping Forest District Local Plan Submission version 2017. <laughs> Additionally, the planning decision notice in that meeting as signed by Nigel Richardson, Planning Services Director, records the following. Reasons for refusal. The Local Planning Authority has acted positively and proactively in determining this application by identifying matters of concern with the proposal. However, the issues are so fundamental to the proposal that it's clearly not possible to negotiate a satisfactory way forward and due to the harm which has been clearly identified within the reasons for the refusal, approval has not been possible. Since that time, I reiterate, nothing has been done at which ways to overcome these issues. In fact, the amenity issues highlighted in the decision notice are now a reality because despite the refusal of planning permission, construction of the pool room is underway. As a formal assessment, the pool room has already been has already concluded and deemed unsatisfactory. The expected next step would be the issue of an enforcement notice to remove the unauthorized development. To date, no action has been taken, and Mr. Gordon touched on that. I also request the application be deferred until accurate plans of the development are produced. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next speaker. Uh, is Mr. Harani, who is the applicant's agent, and you, sir, have three minutes. Good evening. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I appreciate your time, Mr. Ernest and Ms. Gooden. Um, I'd like to start off with, with this application. We've had no objections. Sorry, we've had no objections for the eight meter ground floor rate, the prior approval we put in for. Um, we find it strange that we've now got objections just for a basement area. I understand at the time when my client did do the construction, it was a big void. Um, as Mr. Gooden did point out, there's a very big drop from the house to the garden. It's an approximately six meter drop. Hence the reason why my client has put a basement in that space, because it was a void. Um, also, we'd like to point out, there was an application put in, in 2018, reference number 3329, um, forward slash 18, for a four bedroom large house. Um, this is more, more of an impact and detrimental impact to, my, um, to the neighboring property, of which we had no objections from the parish or the neighbors. My client has still got the rights to build this application, number 3329, forward slash 18, which don't require planning consent. Um, sorry, which has already got planning consent. So we do question why we had objections um, against this one when the previous application was approved for a larger development. And we also state, we also note that the, the parish council stated about the waterway at the rear. Um, we are approximately 50 meters away from the waterway and a height of 10 meters. For the waterway to, to come up that high for 10 meters, I think it'd be a detrimental impact to London in total, and let alone Epping Borough Council. Thank you very much for your time. And I look forward to your decision. Thank you very much. Um, perhaps we could just go back to Mr. Golden for a moment, um, just to make clear, um, there is an appeal in progress at the present time? Yes, Councillor. The previous application um, had the pool house on it as well. Uh, and this is what was refused by officers under delegated powers a few months ago. Uh, this is subject of a, an appeal. Um, so this application is purely for what you can see here. It's nothing to do with the pool house because that wasn't on the application drawings. 
it is the case that the pool house has been started to be uh, erected um, and we have uh, taken the appropriate enforcement action at this stage uh, and it may well end up in the service of an enforcement notice on the pool house but this application is not about the pool house it is about the rear uh, extension that you can see before you in or you saw before you in the photographs um i hope th i hope that's uh, explained it okay thank you very much and also just to make again clear if the pool room underneath was filled up with material then this would come under existing regulations that they would not need a separate application is that correct uh, yes if it was a genuine single story building with the uh, an eight meter PDE application. Okay, thank you very much. Um, councillors, the recommended decision is to grant permission with two conditions. Uh, who would like to start? Councillor Brady. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I think we have to make this very, very clear to everybody here. I read it through several times. I think I'm very clear. I've listened to what Mr. Godden said. I listened to the briefing beforehand. I think we just can't emphasize enough that um, what the parish council was objecting to was the whole setup of, um, you know, gates, walls, pool houses, everything else. Um, and, that, and that the um, uh, planning department of EFDC have very carefully removed all the contentious parts of the original application. Um, so we've also got muddled with Mr. Tomsett, particularly objecting to the pool house. Um, yeah, sounds like the, you know that's about to be enforced against or it is being enforced against. Everybody's objecting to the pool house. That isn't what we're talking about today. What we are talking about today is just this extension with the um, with the basement underneath. Um, now the parish council again. I'll just draw this other thing. What they were worried about seemed to be whether the basement would affect the water flow around the house and affect the neighbours, uh, the neighbouring houses. Um, but again, the council drainage team have been on to this and they have said that they raise no objections on the drainage, but point out that if there should be any problems in the future, then the gentleman who has created this basement and this building, he will be liable for any drainage problems on the neighbouring property. So again, I think that is all covered. Um, so on that basis, I can't see any grounds for objection, but it is very well worth pointing out that people should apply for planning permission in advance of everything that they do, all the works that they do. They should apply in advance for gates, walls, pool buildings, extensions, um, particularly if they've got a big, if there's a huge drop in the land here. So, um, you know, I would just point that out. It's getting this this person into a lot of problems with all the neighbours. Seems to be upsetting a lot of people because he's just gone ahead and built all sorts of things here without getting planning permission. And this is now retrospective, and this is causing issues. Um, but personally, I can't see any reason to um, refuse this this extension at the back. Thank hey. you. Thank you very much. Other councillors who wish to speak? Uh, Councillor Hadley. Do we, ah, oh, there he is, he's come back. Thank Councillor Hadley. After the presentation, I had a power cut. Um, so presumably I'm not allowed to vote on this. Um, did you listen to the, all of the presentation? Did you hear the? No, you won't be allowed to vote. No, no, it, 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 no. In which case, you should withdraw from voting, Councillor Hadley. Thank you. Okay. Other councillors, uh, Councillor John Whitehouse, and then Councillor Philip. Thanks, Chairman. Yeah, I mean, I, I look. We look as it's been said. We're looking at the extension um, in isolation um, on this application. 
and I'm satisfied um, that you know, because of how it relates to the building line of the neighbours, it doesn't um, <coughs> impact on that. I did want to explore a bit more with Mr. Godden about the application, the, the, the design policies. Um, you know, we're looking for high quality design and, and, and good design. Um, and there's a sort of a, a brief exploration of that on page 29, where it says the design is, is functional. Um, I'm not sure that quite satisfies the requirement of the policy, and I'd just be interested to hear a bit more about how those design policies have been, have been applied here. Uh, well, the officers will look at the design policies as laid out in both the adopted local plan and the and the new submission local plan as well. <coughs> um, it, it's always a balancing act with existing buildings with extensions in terms of design. It's very easy to see a, a new building, whether people think the design is good or bad. With extensions at the back um, of properties, there's there's less... Um, there's less impact on the public space and on the street, etc. Uh, and to be honest, assessing this, um, it, this is a pretty standard flat roof type of extension, uh, which you would see over the district and around the entire country. Uh, and I, I would accept it's not the most inspired design, but it, it is functional and it does the job and it doesn't cause any harm in terms of its impact uh, when, you look at the, when you look at it. OK, Councillor Whitehouse, are you happy with that? No, that is useful. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Philip. Yes, thank you, Tim. I think the other thing I need to, to um, pick up, um, although it has to be said, uh, Councillor Brady covered a lot of these points. Um, one of the things that's raised by one of the applicants is that uh, the pool house is not shown in this application. The pool house does not have a planning permission at the moment, therefore, it is not something that can be taken into account uh, with this one. Um, clearly, when the pool house application if a pool house application comes forward then if this is granted that planning permission that plan would have to take the extension into account as well because because the planning permission has been granted uh, so I, I think given everything that council brady said I, I agree with her on this one okay thank you very much uh would other councillors like to speak uh councillor bedford Hey Chairman, a uh, question for Mr. Gordon because I don't think it came up. Can I ask, is the basement area accessed via the house or is it accessed from outside? It's accessed via the house. There's a small staircase going down inside the, inside the extension into the basement. Because oh, all, all I'm thinking of, Mr. Gordon, I'm putting my fire safety hat on. And I just, it's, it's not enforceable. We can't ask them to do it, but we can just recommend that they put some smoke detectors in the room above, so that if there is a fire up there, they become aware of it. Uh, we can put that on as an informative councillor, yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, well, if no other councillors wish to speak, Councilor then... Mackay, yes. the oh, I'm sorry, up. I'm sorry, I do apologise. You've, you've appeared sideways, Councillor MacIver, which made it difficult to see <laughs> that you wanted to speak. But yes, if you'd oh. like to go ahead. Ah, that's better. Is Councillor MacIver the right way around now? Yes, she is oh, indeed. Good. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just uh, wanted, I, I totally agree with Councillor Brady and uh, like many other members have this evening. I just have a question for the planning officer. And it's obviously also notable that this particular um, road, many of the houses are all of different designs. There isn't much of a street scene. So I, I appreciate that the uh, it's not a particularly creative rear extension, but it is one that does, to me, cause any detrimental impacts to the scene. And of course, all the gardens do look over each other. My question is just with regards to the basement, um, would the planning officer, uh, I mean, it is a very unique situation with the geography, but would it have just been that the basement was the obvious thing to do? Um, and if there was to have been a planning application, would we have had a problem with a basement? Um, considering the fact that there is a very significant gap between what would have been the first floor of that property and and the original groundwork? So I was just wondering, would it have been our advice to have a basement, or is it quite normal to have a building raised from the ground like that? It's not one I've seen before. Um, well, I think looking at this because of the topography of the ground, we we would have thought an extension coming out at that length, at that depth rather, almost certainly would have a void underneath it. So if you could make the space usable to to as a basement, I don't think we'd have had any particular objection to that in an urban area like this is. 
Um, we would have um, liked to have obviously had a basement impact assessment as part of a planning application to deal with it. Unfortunately, what we've got here is it's already been built. So, um, but if 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 this had been done uh, with a planning application coming in first and the basement had been part of it, we would have assessed it. I mean, clearly I haven't got a crystal ball, but I would have thought there would have been a fair chance that we would have found it acceptable. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, in which case, members, we will go to a vote. The recommended decision is to grant permission with conditions, and I would bring your attention to condition two with regard to a privacy screen um, facing Colliton. Uh, and, and I would ask if you could be voting uh, for granting or against or abstentions. Officers. Councillor Bedford. Granting. Councillor Bolton. Granting. Councillor Burrows. Granting. Councillor McCready. Granting. Councillor McIver. We've lost Granting. You. Granting. Thank you. Can Councillor Morgan. Uh, granted. Councillor Phillip. Uh, granting. Councillor Stalker. Granting. Councillor Vaz. Granting. Councillor Chris Whitbread. Granting. Councillor Holly Whitbread. Granting. Councillor John Whitehouse. For granting. Councillor Janet Whitehouse. For granting. Councillor Kesker. For granting. Councillor Brady. For granting. That's unanimous, Chairman. Thank you very much. In which case, members' planning permission is granted with the conditions as listed on page 26. Uh, we will now, now go on to uh, item 11, exclusion of public and press. Do we have anything to come under exclusion? No, Chairman. Okay, thank you very much. In which case, could I thank members and officers for their assistance in seeing us through another remote and virtual meeting uh, and uh, close the meeting at 8.09. Thank you very much. Good night, Chairman. Thank, Thank you, Chairman. Chairman.